Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start, at the very least, on my review of The Duke of Caladan by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. So this is the latest in the Expanded Dune series. This one came out in 2020, I think, and it's part of a three-book trilogy with the most recent one pretty much coming out at the time of filming. Um, I think it's out this month. So, by the time I get to it, it should be there. As always, I'm going to read the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... A legend begins. Leto Atreides, Duke of Caladan and father of the Muad'Dib. While all know of his fall and the rise of his son, little is known about the quiet ruler of Caladan and his partner Jessica, or how the Duke of an inconsequential planet earned the favour of an emperor but the ire of House Arconan and set himself on a collision course with his own death. This is the story. Through patience and loyalty, Leto serves the Golden Lion Throne, where others scheme the Duke of Caladan act. But Leto's powerful enemies are starting to feel that he is rising beyond his station, and House Atreides is rising too high. With unseen enemies circling, Leto must determine the proper course of duty and honour to save House Atreides and the people he loves. So, let's go through and check out some tabs. So it starts with a quote, and quite often when I'm reviewing the Dune books, it's the quotes at the start of the chapters that really sort of stand out to me. Um, and this is literally the quote that kicks off the novel. The person with the fewest accomplishments often boasts the loudest. Charm analysis of public imperial histories, and that is very true. And another quote here I wanted to share, this is from Duke Leto Atreides' private notes to his son, Paul. Some say that contentment with one's station leads to a lack of ambition. On the other hand, I have observed that ambition can become a cancer that eats a person from within. A true leader must find the proper balance. Very true. So there's a great, a great quote here by Baron Vladimir Harkonnen. I feast on life, I feast on death. And we get, uh, we get uh, an example of that as well. In the bedroom wing of his Carthag headquarters, the Baron finished strangling the boy with one powerful hand. He felt dissatisfied and frustrated. Avoiding a twinge of pain from his other broken wrist, he shoved the scrawny naked body off the bed. The young man had resisted like a feral cat, even had the audacity to bite the Baron's lower lip, making it bleed. Now he touched his sore mouth, muttering a curse. Another injury. And actually in the book I recently read, um, The Sound of Broken Ribs by Edward Lorne here on Booktube, he was talking in that about how bites from human beings are like the worst kind of bite you can get, apart from, it, apart from a rabid animal. And I like this because this kind of shows on Arrakis. Uh, I always like anything that shows how water is treated by the Fremen and the people of Arrakis. Um, so the Baron chucks this boy's body out the window and then we get He watched from the high window knowing what would happen next Desperate people were so predictable Poor street rabble appeared wearing rags over their ubiquitous still suits And snatched up the body wrapping it and rushing away According to rumour which the Baron believed The poorest scum in the city rendered the bodies down to reclaim water How desperate their lives must be I know uh, the Baron gets stopped from going to visit um, Emperor Shaddam's got like a new museum he's built and then there's an attack made on his life which basically vaporises a bunch of people. Um, and the Baron gets stopped because there's an attack from like the Fremen or whatever and he gets them all captured. And um, we get, we get, Raban stopped chewing. We were supposed to be there uncle, you would have been killed. The Baron felt a sudden sharp chill. Yes, I was ready to depart. He looked at the gory heads distributed around the banquet table, spoke to them. Ah, it appears your little attack may have saved my life. The slack face of the nearest dead man showed no appreciation for the news. Just a nice little bit of dramatic irony there. Okay, a quote here from Count Hazimir Fenring. A news report is based on fact fiction or a combination of the two and is presented from a certain angle. Truth belongs to those who control that perspective which is very true in our era of fake news. And we learn um, when Duncan was being trained, he said, when I was at the Jinnah school, the swordmasters would make us sit motionless for hours, sometimes a full day, without explanation, without giving us a goal. We learned to understand and accept futility. And Dr. Wei says, it is good to know where one's food comes from, which is very true, and that's what I try and do. And uh, Thufa, the mentor, he says, a properly worded document on paper can be as binding as plasteel cuffs. Which I think is a great line. Um, and then they attack like where this illegal drug is being grown and they make, mount an attack on it. And um, they deliberately turn lasguns against ships, the uh, people who run this drug operation, which is a great no in the Imperial Accord. It basically causes like an atomic explosion. Um, and it's kind of one of those things that just isn't done, you know? So it's always interesting to see when somebody resorts to that. It's, um, I don't know, it's a bit like being a suicide bomber except worse. It's like if suicide bombers had atomic bombs, that kind of shit. It's, it's not good, is it, you know? 
Okay, so here we have a quote from Count Hazimir Fenring. In its most logical form, all life can be viewed as a decision chart of positive and negative influences as we attempt to reach an optimal determination. But not all decisions are logical, and it is on that path that trouble often lies. And I just like this as well, so um, Fenring gets offered a drink from one of the smugglers on Arrakis, and, he, and it says, On any other world, it would have been a meaningless social nicety. Here on Arrakis, it was a significant gesture. Fenring graciously accepted. So yeah, there was some good stuff in The Duke of Caladan by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. I like Duke Lee to Atreides as a character. I find him really interesting. And so it was cool to read, read this to get a little bit more of his backstory, you know. Um, well written, decent start for the trilogy as well. Kind of left me wondering what's going to happen next. There are some sort of rifts in the Atreides family. Overall, I gave The Duke of Caladan by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson a solid 4 out of 5. So there we have it, that's what I made of The Duke of Caladan by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.